If you are tired of being tired or wondering if you have chronic fatigue syndrome or the new term, which is myologic encephalopathy, and wondering if there's a virus component, then this is the presentation for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Jason West. We are having a chronic fatigue awareness month. We're doing this education series on why people are tired, the causes of chronic fatigue, and then most importantly, what to do about it, how to support the two most neglected organs in traditional medicine, which is the thymus and the spleen. So particularly on this segment, we're going to be talking about the Epstein-Barr virus, also known as the kissing virus. This is the virus that most people are exposed to in high school or college, but there's some statistics and facts that are really important to understand about this virus and how it really, really impacts people. So where is this found? Epstein-Barr is found all over the world. Most people get infected at some point in their lives. Some people, it doesn't affect them at all. Other people, it is life-changing. Now, it's spread through bodily fluids, primarily the saliva. It can cause infectious mononucleosis, which we call mono, and that is when you get wiped out, exhausted, your lymph nodes swell. Typically, you get a fever. This is the acute phase and then it can turn into this ticking time bomb. And why I wanted to put this presentation together is because there's so many people that it hits either later on. There's a bunch of people that it seems to have no effect on at all. They've been exposed to it. And one of the questions that people ask all the time is, well, what can I do to not pick up or not be exposed to Epstein-Barr? And I don't think it's possible. We're all going to get exposed to Epstein-Barr. I had Epstein-Barr virus when I was in college that really did a number to me. I ended up in the emergency room with my lymph nodes in my neck. They were swollen so much it was difficult to breathe. Um, I went through a full recovery. I'm going to tell you about exactly the lymph drainage, immune system stimulation, Native American herb that my dad put me on that helped me. That's part of our chronic fatigue program. But it is a huge, huge factor in health and in and particularly in chronic fatigue. So again, these symptoms are fatigue, inflamed throat, swollen lymph nodes. You can have an enlarged spleen, a swollen liver, or even a skin rash. And so the transmission of Epstein-Barr, it's usually through the saliva, but blood, sexual contact, blood transfusions, organ transplants. I mean, obviously, none of those are something that is, is something that anybody wants to have happen. It's a lot of times with Epstein-Barr transmission, it's kissing someone or it's sharing a cup or sharing utensils. And so it's a really significant uh, player in this whole chronic fatigue process. So the difficulty with Epstein-Barr is once the virus is in your body, it, it literally stays there. And most of the time it stays in an inactive state. And if the virus reactivates, you could potentially spread it to other people no matter how much time has passed since the initial infection. So people say, look, I had this when I was in high school and they're in their mid-30s or they're in their 50s and all of a sudden this is back. And what happened was the immune system couldn't keep up, whether it's stress, whether it's hormone change, a significant traumatic event like a, you know, a car accident or a slip and fall, and basically the body's energy gets knocked down and it's the signal for this virus to be like, okay, hey, we're going to get back and we're going to uh, infect this person. We're going to go through an infection cycle. So the testing for Epstein-Barr, and this is something I was really excited to present on because it's a source of information and can be a source of frustration. So here are the different types of tests you have what's called the viral antigen. We have the DC, excuse me, early by VCA. We have the early antigen, the Epstein-Barr nuclear antigen, and they all mean a whole bunch of different things. So let's start going through the information here on if someone has an, a positive VCA, then likely a person has an Epstein-Barr infection and maybe early in the course of illness. Now, just like with other things, the earlier you get on this, the better it is when you initially start getting symptoms. And if you're, if you're experiencing extreme fatigue, exhaustion, swollen lymph nodes, 
uh, possibly tenderness in the abdomen, getting a test and a workup is really, really critical to get early intervention. Now, the next test that, that they do is something called the VCA EDA. It's highly likely that the person has a current or recent Epstein bar. So if you have a positive VCA and what they call an Epstein early D antigen test, an IgG test, it means that you're in the middle of it or recently just got over it. If the VCA is negative and the Epstein bar antibody is positive, then you've had a previous infection. Now, this is the part that is frustrating because many times healthcare providers extrapolate this too much and they'll say, well, you've had it in the past and everybody's had it and the antibodies don't mean anything. Look, the antibodies in these tests usually should be less than 18. They should be non-responsive. If you have increased antibodies, yes, you could have an acute or you could just be recovering or a chronic, but really the treatment considerations that we go through with people every single day is if we can get your immune system working right, if especially the, what they call the cell-mediated immunity. Now, cell-mediated immunity is your immune system that helps to work on inside of the cells. Um, Antibody-related immunity, that's, you know, for bacteria, that's everything outside of the cells. And the thymus gland, which can, which can always confused with the thyroid gland. Thyroid is here. Thymus gland is down here. Is the key determining gland in how you manage acute chronic viral infections. And so much of the time, healthcare providers, they just are not really aware of what you can do for the, for the thymus gland. Okay, so going over to the next test. So we have um, a, a couple other correlations. If a patient is a negative VCA and negative, and the person has not had an Epstein-Barr and is vulnerable to infection, if we have rising levels it, of the VCA, it indicates an active infection. And then here's what I would really like uh, people to know here. I gotta look over my slide here. Interpreting the Epstein-Barr test is is important because if there's a significant amount of antibody present or high levels of VCA, it can be with a person for the rest of their life. And what I would really hope that we could have happen is we need to do some interventions that really work on making people healthy. So favorite things to do, work on the thymus and the spleen. There's a, a organ extract that gives you nutritional support for the thymus, which is helps with the T4 cells and the T suppressor cells and have regulates your immune system. Of course, we talk so much about vitamins A and C and D3, and then the, the magic mineral is zinc, you know, 30 to 50 milligrams of zinc is so helpful. Now, one of the things that I'm excited to share with you is a specific way to help clean out the lymph nodes, and then I wanted to tell you about a Native American medicine that I've had 21 years of experience with, which stimulates the body against viruses. I've seen it work on Epstein-Barr. I've seen really good outcomes with cytomegalovirus. I've seen uh, really help um, people that have had a recurrent chickenpox or, or shingles situation, and also I've seen it do really well on warts. And the medicine, I don't have this in my notes, so if you're wanting to, a, a wonderful thing for Epstein-Barr, just write this down. It's Lomatium, L-O-M-A-T-I-U-M. Lomatium is such a powerful immune system stimulator or regulator. But we want to have, here it is, another way to help the immune system is there was a paper published in the Townsend Newsletter, which is a the Journal of Alternative Medicine about a doctor guy that went to Africa and was treating some really con complex healthcare conditions. This was in the 1920s, 1930. They published it in the 1930s about using oral potassium and hydrochloric acid and how it changed the ion structure inside of lymph nodes. So, so when your white blood cells grab onto something, it takes it to the immune to the immune system, the lymph nodes, and that's the jails of the body. So the white blood cells, we find the bad guys, we literally take them over the lymph nodes, and if the lymph nodes get full, then it's an opportunity for infection to become rampant. Well, what Dr. Guy found out is using this simple 
potassium hydrochloric acid. It changed the hydrogen ion content in the lymph. And these sick people, their lymph started to becoming normal. This is a really easy, inexpensive way to help clean out your immune system. And I've seen it really work well in clinical practice for years. Another thing is that I see using Dr. Tom Levy's protocol, doing vitamin C infusion treatments where we can skip the stomach and go right in to the bloodstream are really effective. So we have a chronic fatigue program. If you're seeing value in what we put together, I would invite you to check out our chronic fatigue program. You can sit, check it out over at drjasonwest.live. I have a little introductory video over here that you can see chronic fatigue doesn't have to define you how you can beat chronic fatigue. We have a little program and what I'm excited about is it's wonderful information on resources such as an ebook, recommendations, in-depth supplement, more information about that amazing American native herb called Lomatium, sources for high quality products and advanced treatments. And so if this is, is part of what is defining your life, is this chronic fatigue, Go over to drjasonwass.live. There is a cost associated with the program, but there, this is a perfect win situation because if you enroll in the program and then you decide either to come into the office or to do some recommended supplements, you take the cost of, from the program and invest it in that. So you really have nothing to lose, everything to gain. You can also see previous replays over there, the three types of chronic fatigue, the 13 causes of fatigue, the natural supplements for sleep, how to get a good night's sleep. It's all about fatigue week. I'm Dr. Jason West, and that is some considerations for Epstein-Barr testing. We'll see you guys on the next program, and please give us a like or a shout out. And if you're on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. We come up with something every single week. We're talking about healthcare next month. We're going to be talking about the great imitator and Lyme disease. I'm Dr. Jason West, and here's to your energy balance and longevity.